afterwards as well. Um, and so this funding opportunity is coming to us in partnership with the New Jersey State League of Municipalities um, and is going to be funded by Walmart. And so we're really excited to be able to offer this opportunity where you can uh, apply for funding to address mental health, substance use, and stigma through your mayor's wellness campaign program. Um, if you're looking for some examples of, of programming that, that would be great to use for this funding opportunity, we do have a mayor's wellness campaign mental health toolkit, um, which can be used for different strategies um, for your program. And that can be found right on our mayor's wellness campaign website. Um, so for the funding available, um, eligible municipalities can apply for funding amounts of $10,000, $15,000, and $25,000. There will be up to 15 awards totaling $127,500. Um, we will have to use discretion based on the number of applications that come in and the funding amounts that people are applying for of how many of each award um, we'll be giving out. And that is something that we will just have to determine as we receive um, those applications. But those are the amounts that that we are looking for applications for. Um, eligibility. So only municipal governments can apply. Um, so nonprofits, uh, other partners are not able to actually submit the application. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't work with uh, community partners to develop and your program and to actually implement your program if you're awarded the grant. But only um, municipal government agencies can apply. And you do have to be part of the Mayor's Wellness Campaign program. So if you're not sure if your municipality is part of the Mayor's Wellness Campaign, you can reach out to me um, and I can give you an update of the status of your program. Um, in addition to, to needing to have signed up for the program at some point, we would love for you to have um, your your annual pledge of participation signed uh, either in the last calendar year or this one. So again, if you have any questions about the status of your eligibility, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and we will only be accepting one application per municipality. So we know, um, especially in some of the larger cities, that you might have multiple areas um, that, that could submit an application, multiple departments, but there will only be one application per municipality. So make sure that you guys are talking internally um, and deciding what uh, is the best way for you to go about that. Um, here is a schedule uh, for the grant period. So obviously our technical assistance webinar is today. Um, the responses are going to be due Monday, July 31st at 5 p.m. There will be no exceptions to this. We will not be accepting late applications. Um, I know for some of our other application processes, we're able to uh, offer some flexibility on this, um, but because there is funding available, we need to make sure that it's an equitable and fair process for everyone. So um, any application submitted after that deadline will not be reviewed. So just please keep that in mind um, and make sure to submit those uh, early and on time. Um, our award notification will be August 31st at the latest. So um, we know that, that as you can see on the next line there, that the contract period does start September 1st um, and that that is a very quick turnaround time. Um, unfortunately, um, that is just how the schedule works out. We are going to attempt to um, do those award notifications as soon as we possibly can, but at a minimum, at the worst case scenario, you will receive um, notification on August 31st that you've received the award. Um, the contract period will be a 12-month period, so September 1st of 2023 to August 31st of 2024. Um, and then we will be doing a public award announcement at the New Jersey um, League of Municipalities Conference in November down at Atlantic City. And then there will be an interim report due uh, on March 15th, and then final reports will be due September 16th. Um, scope of work. This is this is exactly what you saw in the application. We are looking for programming to address mental health, substance use, and or stigma um, in communities, and we're particularly interested in initiatives that really use your mayor's wellness campaign to plan, develop, and implement programs, uh, focus on underserved and marginalized populations, provide community education about mental health, substance use, and stigma, um, promote and increase access to healthy coping strategies in times of stress and crisis, uh, foster a sense of belonging among the, your community members, using a holistic approach to promote health and well-being, and then um, programs that increase access to affordable mental health services. So we are really leaving the door open for you to decide what program would best suit your community's needs. Um, it, it really, we are looking for creativity. We are looking for programs that 
address the unique circumstances of your residents. Uh, we do want to see how you are focused on underserved and marginalized populations, uh, increasing, you know, health and wellness, um, access to health and wellness programming for your residents. But we really want you to tell us what your community needs and what programs would best serve your residents. There are not a lot of stipulations around um, the type of programming that you need to, that we are looking to fund. We want to make sure that they are um, evidence-based, uh, that they are, are addressing mental health, substance use, and, and stigma um, reduction in your community, and that they're uh, reaching the diverse populations in your community. But other than that, uh, we're really looking for, for your creativity here. Um, and so we're just going to kind of walk through the application just so that we are clear on what we're asking. So I know that this um, might sound silly, but I, I do want to just say for name municipality, please make sure that you are including the official name of your community. Um, I know a lot of times we go by by uh, nicknames or shortened names. We're really looking for the full name. Um, this will also come into play as we're kind of cutting checks and things like that. So same thing with your mailing address. Make sure that you're providing the mailing address where we can mail any um checks or official uh, documentation. Um, for the name of the individual responsible for the grant, we are looking for one person who can be the, the point person for this grant. It is up to you um, and your community to decide who the best person for that is, but this is the person that we will be reaching out to um, for, um, for all of the, the communication matters on the grant. Um, and make sure that you're telling us, uh, you know, the, the amount that you are looking to apply for. So in don't overcomplicate this section. We're really just looking for uh, a number in the request amount and the, the regular information that we're asking for here. Um, for the project description, provide an overview of the program. This, again, one of my, my tips, and I'll kind of talk about this at the end, do not overcomplicate these questions. Um, if we didn't ask the question, we don't need the information. So we're really, um, one of the ways that you can really strengthen your application is to provide clear and concise answers. So for a project description, provide an overview of the program. This section should make it really clear um, what the goal, you know, what, what your program is aiming to do, uh, what activities you'll be doing through the program, and, and how you'll be doing it. And the program goal, you're going to describe the goal of this program. What need are you um, looking to serve and meet with this program? For your target population, describe the intended population of the program. Um, we want to know, you know, is there a certain population in your within your residence that you're looking to focus on, whether it be youth or older adults, um, or is it going to be uh, a specific um, uh, population within your your area of, of residents. Um, and then describe how the program is going to address needs of underserved populations in your community. We really want you to think about this, this question. We want you to be thinking about your program. Um, and even if the, the intended target population is not a specific underserved population in your community, we want you to demonstrate here how you're going to make sure that those underserved populations in your community are going to have access to this program. How are you going to outreach to them to make sure that they are taking advantage of the program? Um, and how is it addressing their unique needs? Um, in question nine, you're going to describe your partners for the program and how you're going to work with them. So uh, we really encourage collaboration here, even though um, even though it is a, a good amount of funding, we know that um, you know it's going to take a lot of uh, collaboration and support to to get a program off the ground for the for the dollar amount that we are offering. And so uh, think about how can you how can you coordinate with your other municipal departments, with your school system, with health systems, with other providers in the community? This is where we want to really hear about how you're going to bring in some of those stakeholders that typically work with you and your mayor's wellness campaign to achieve this program. Um, and then for program activities and projected timelines, uh, again, don't overcomplicate this. It can be a list where you're telling us exactly what activities are going to happen throughout that 12-month period um, and letting us know when um, you know, you plan to have each of those activities completed. Uh, this is going to really serve to show us exactly what your plan for the program is. And then for program evaluation, you're going to describe how you're going to measure success for this program. Um, I want to really hear about the specific evaluation processes and intended outcomes of the program. You have been hearing us, um, you know, for, for the last few years now, really focus on 
being able to show the impact of your program. And so we're not specifying to you how you need to um, evaluate these programs or what the intended outcomes could should be, but this is a space for you to really show us what your goal is with the program and how you're going to decide, did this program work? Was it useful? Um, or do we need to rethink it? For the budget, um, I'm going to pull up the, the Excel sheet in a second, um, but all we are looking for for the budget is for you to complete the Excel form that is on the website. So I, again, encourage you to keep it simple. Um, if we're not asking for information, don't feel like you have to give it to us. Um, the budget should match the timeline and activities. We should be able to understand where you're spending this money based on your program description, the timeline and activities and the budget. It should be really clear how these things are matching up and what you're gonna be using that funding for. Um, and as far as allowable costs, let me just pull up the spreadsheet here. Again, um, this is a relatively simple budget form and we are really just looking for dollars and dollar amounts in this, in this column here. You don't need to describe the details. Um, we want to see if you're paying for staff uh, or contractors that you might be partnering with, um, if you're going to have any travel for your staff related to, to getting to and from programming, um, if you're going to need to be printing or copying materials for the program, um, if you need to include a, a telephone or tech platform, um, and then supplies uh, and other. And so again, um, even though we are not asking for a ton of detail around this, I do just want to make a note that we fully understand that incentives, uh, you know, giveaways, uh, things like that, when you're doing community work, we, we understand that those have benefits um, and we understand that you may need to, to spend some of the funding on that. However, um, you know, it really should not be the, the majority of your funding. We want to make sure that this funding is being utilized to get services, education, programming to residents. So, um, you know, there, there can be some, some money spent on some of those kind of uh, giveaway incentive items, but uh, we want to see the majority of this funding going to towards the, the real meat of the programming. Sorry. Okay. Um, and some reminders here. So when you are submitting your application, you are going to be emailing them directly to me. Uh, that email should just contain two attachments. It should be the PDF of the um, the answer, the responses to the, the application questions and that budget Excel form that I just showed you. Make sure that you are including your town name in those attached files. Uh, so for the budget Excel form and the PDF, your town name should be included in the attachment file names that you are submitting to me. Um, I also just want to remind you about the... Um, page limit and the format requirements. If you if your application does not fit into these uh, requirements, then it won't be reviewed. So applications should be single spaced uh, in Times New Roman font size 12 and should not exceed four pages in length. So your PDF should not be more than four pages. Um, and then you'll also submit that budget form uh, separately. So just those two pieces. Um, when you send me your application, I will respond to confirm that you that I've received your, your email. So if you do not receive that confirmation email um, within a, a day or two, um, make sure you reach back out to myself or to Katie uh, to, see, to see what happened there. Um, so just you will receive confirmation that we've received your application. Um, and as I mentioned before, make sure that you're answering the questions. We're, we're only answering the questions uh, asking the questions that we are looking for information for. So answer the questions, be simple, clear, and concise. Um, and that's really going to be the best way for you to have a successful application. Um, and again, that, that application deadline is Monday, July 31st at 5 p.m. Um, make sure that you are sending those in by that time or your application will not be reviewed. Um, so that was just obviously a quick overview, and now um, we'll jump into the, the bulk of, of our time here today, which will be some questions. So let me just pull up. Um, okay. Uh, so the first question is, can you apply for several programs that add up to that amount? Uh, you absolutely can. We are, are not, um, we really are not 
being very prescriptive on, on what your application should look like. Um, as long as your funding amount doesn't exceed the, the dollar amount that you are requesting, and you can explain um, in the in the uh, four pages what you want to do with that funding, then, then that, that works out well. Um, we're in the beginning phases of creating a community center, a place where our mostly senior population can go and socialize. Would this be considered for the grant funding? So again, I think what you really want to do when you're thinking about how you're going to use this funding is how are you going to show me in the application that this has a benefit to mental health, substance use, or stigma reduction? And there should be some really specific programming around that. I completely agree um, that a space for uh, older adults to come and socialize and reduce social isolation has a really positive impact on mental health. Um, but I'd make sure that when you're describing how you want to use that funding in the in the application that you're connecting it back to that mental health piece, talking about underserved uh, populations and how you're going to, to really address that piece of it. Um, I think, again, we know that there are so many different things that affect our mental, mental health. And so just make sure that you're making the case for it in your application. Will cash match and in-kind be required? Uh, no, we are not asking you to, to specify that. I think, honestly, we know that uh, at these funding amounts, we know that there's probably other dollars being, being supporting these uh, programs as well. And are you allowed to partner with other groups, schools, and in your community? Absolutely. Again, your town is going to be the applicant. Your town is going to, the municipality itself is going to be um, who receives the the check and the funding, um, but we would love to see you partnering with other community members uh, and organizations. I think that that's really going to strengthen your programming. Can funds be used to target a growing Hispanic speaking community, for example, ESL and citizen exam prep? Um, again, I think that the focus here really needs to be mental health, substance use, and stigma reduction. I, I I can understand uh, making the case for um, how supporting a lot of these different programs um, and how they connect to mental health is, is going to work. But at the end of the day, um, I anticipate that we will get more applications than we have uh, funding for. And our goal is really to be supporting mental health, substance use, and stigma reduction programming. So, so keep that in mind. Um, can funds be used for elementary school programs, teaching about coping mechanisms? Yes, absolutely. Yep. Um, should the dollar amounts, uh, be specific or can we give round num numbers? I think you want to get as close as you can. I'm not looking for like $10 and 77 cents. Um, I think you can, but again, uh, make sure that, that you're aware of what the, the costs are going to be and that you're going to be able to stick to that budget because that is something that in those interim uh, and final reports, you are going to have to show us that the, the budget amount that you propose uh, matches your spending. So, um, you know, again, not looking to overcomplicate things, but uh, you should be very, very close. The budget is going to serve as um, your fiscal kind of roadmap for the program. Advertising is not on the spreadsheet. Is this a reimbursable expense? Um, if you think that you want to include that in the other, um, that's up to you. Again, I think we know that that realistically you do need to be able to get your programs out, but I think, uh, you know, is that the best use of your funding at, at this dollar amount? Um, when you have a lot of free opportunities to advertise, like your social media pages or the other ways that your community usually gets information out, um, I think that that's up to you. We're really looking to see this, the dollar amounts focused uh, primarily on the, the programmatic aspects. But uh, communications, marketing is going to be a piece of that. That's why we included some of those printing um, and copying uh, line items there. Could municipalities partner together with a nonprofit for funding to launch a program that would benefit residents? Uh, yep, absolutely. Uh, again, you're going to have to decide through that budget how you best want to use your funding. The funding is going to go to uh, the municipality, but if you want to contract some of that out, that's why we did leave space um, in the budget for contracts. Do programs or events need to have exact dates set in uh, the application, or can we give a general timeline? You can give... Um, you know, you don't have to have September 3rd, uh, but I think what I want to be able to see from that timeline and activities is, uh, is this realistic? You know, are you giving yourself enough time to plan for the program? Do we really think that it is a, um, 
a realistic and attainable timeline. So you want to get as close as you can, but uh, we're not going to hold you to a specific date if you say that you're going to do it, um, you know, in September and it ends up in October, that's okay. As long as it seems some, like a reasonable plan for you, um, we're okay with that. Are there any percentage requirements? Uh, no, we do not have any re percentage requirements. Again, uh, you know, the budget is a good place for you to demonstrate are you, um, you know, planning to use this funding in a responsible way that's going to increase access to this program and services for your residents. Um, we really are not trying to make this any harder uh, than than it is. We know that grant applications and program implementation take a lot of work. Um, we want to make this easy, but we also just want to make sure that the funding is being used responsibly to benefit residents. Is this a reimbursable grant or is the check issued prior to programs? That's a really good question. So we will be providing, uh, we will be cutting the check for 90% of your allocation. Uh, as when we award. So hopefully, you know, obviously we have some some administrative processes, but hoping to get those out uh, very early in September. Um, and then the other 10% you will receive after you've submitted your final report um, at the end of the year. Um, but 90% of your allocation you will receive upfront. How many municipalities are part of the program that are eligible to apply? Uh, there, we have 430 communities that are part of the mayor's wellness campaign. I think that's answering that question. Will modifications be allowed? What if the cost uh, in one area is slightly more or less? Um, anything within a 10% a change. Um, we'll, we'll obviously be providing contracts um, for all the uh, for all of the um, towns that that receive an award, and that's going to have some more specifications about some of those things, but. But the short answer is uh, we are happy to be relatively flexible and have communications uh, with you throughout. So um, if there are changes that need to be made, we're open to having those conversations. Is there a different level of commitment when applying for the different funding amounts? Um, I am not sure if this will answer your question, but I think I think the answer is 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 no. Um, so the, the funding amount is just you know you get to decide how much. Uh, you think your program will will need to to get done, but the the contracts will be the same um, for all of those different funding amounts. Do we need to complete two resolutions? Uh, that that's a internal question. We are not requiring any resolutions. Um, you don't need to show us any of that documentation. Based on the number and quality of applications, is there a possibility of receiving partial funding or less than requested? Yes. Uh, so this is the first time that we are going through this process. So we are just going to have to keep an open mind about, um, you know, we, we're not sure what our, our applications will look like. Um, I would I would really like to keep the funding amounts at ten, fifteen, and twenty five thousand dollars. But that being said, uh, we will have to see what applications look like, how many we get, um, and what the programs look like. So yes, at this point, um, anything is on the table, and we will be uh, reaching out to communities. Um, to kind of have that conversation if we are thinking that we are going to award grants in different funding amounts than that. Um, let's see, it looks like there might be some, oh, thanks, Katie. Um, okay, I see some other questions in the chat. I just want to jump, make sure I get them all. Um, so again, as to answer the question about uh, if you apply for twenty five thousand, could you be considered for the lesser amount? At this point, yes, we are open to that. Um, it really just depends on on how many applications we get. I again, I do anticipate that we are going to receive applications for more funding than we have available. Um, our goal is really to uh, make sure that that um, a variety of communities across the state get access to this funding. So uh, we are open to having to make some of those changes at this time, but but we're not entirely sure what that's going to look like. Um, okay, any other questions? Yeah, thanks, Katie. We will be um, uh, putting the recording of this up on the website. Um, you can also reach out to me uh, with with questions if you have them. Um, I really do recommend that that you take a look at the application um, and get started early if you are planning to apply. Um, it, we again will not be um, accepting any late applications, um, and so just just be aware of that. And uh, I should also mention um, because 
uh, it might be a factor for you. I will be um, out of the office for a, a week. Um, I'll be back when the applications are due. But if you do submit your application to me and receive an out of office, do not panic. Uh, I will, you know, uh, provide that that submission confirmation to everybody um, as soon as I return, and you will receive the out of office from me. So you'll know that it's not just that we didn't receive the applications. Um, are you seeking statistics and demographics? Uh, so again, I encourage you to just answer the questions that are provided. If you think that um, some of those statistics are going to be helpful in, you know, kind of explaining your program goal, uh, you know, if you want to demonstrate the the issue that's in your community and then talk about how the program is going to address that issue. If you feel like that's a good way to do that, we're certainly open to that. Um, we really do want to make sure that the programs are, uh, you know, meeting needs of the community. So um, we're not specifically requiring uh, those those types of of submissions. But I think um, if you think it helps you make the case, then then feel free to include that. I think it's a great way to demonstrate uh, the need in your community. Any other questions? Looks like we've got everyone. Okay. Uh, thank you again for, oh, do we get some more coming in? Let's see. Can we take administrative costs? Uh, again, the, the budget, uh, I just, you know, include the budget items that you see there. We don't have a line item for kind of like overhead indirect costs. Um, so again, we're only looking for the, you know, I should have said this earlier. Um, those budget line items, you know, don't change those. That's, those are the the options that we're looking for. So um, the only thing you should be adding to that budget form is the dollar amount in each of those categories. And if it's zero for some of them, obviously that's completely fine. Um, suppose the projected budget falls within the awarded amounts, can you apply for the higher award? Sorry, Laura, I'm not sure I fully understand the question. Um, um, I think, can I, can I assist? Yeah. Um, I think, and, and feel free to type in the chat or PM us, uh, Laura, but I think what you're saying is uh, if you have a budget and it comes up to like 15,000, can you apply for 25,000 anyway? And that's, feel free to correct me, Laura. And I can just, if Laura, feel free, like she said, to chat if you need it. But again, um, we want, the, the budget should, the budget should match your activities. So even though we're not asking for a budget narrative specifically uh, to ask for kind of those uh, more detailed versions of what you're going to do with the money, it should be very easy for our review committee to look at the budget, look at your program description, look at the activities and understand where that money is being spent. Does that make sense? Again, I, we don't want to overcomplicate it. We're not trying to make this a cumbersome application, but it really shouldn't be uh, hard to understand what those dollar amounts are going towards when we match it with the program description and those activities. Um, oh, if the budget is 12,000, then should I apply for 10 or 15? Laura, I think that's up to you. I think, um, you know, we want to make sure that your your program is fully funded. Um, we And to, to answer a different question, um, we don't want to see applications for $12,000. So I think it's up to you of whether you want to try to build in to, to apply for that $15,000 or if you want to cut back and, and apply for the ten. dollars um, But we are only looking for the budgets to reflect the ten, fifteen, dollars or $25,000 amounts. Um, the budget just needs total figures for each area. For example, contractors, you don't need to list each one. Exactly. And those contractors should be very clear in the program description or the applicate uh, or the timeline, right? So um, if you have a contracted amount for $2,000 for a, um, a speaker, um, then one of those activities in that timeline and activity should be a speaker. Does that make sense? Um, I hope that, that that clarifies. Again, we're not looking for the detailed uh, budget narrative because we don't want to overcomplicate things, but uh, the best way to to have a successful application is to make it really clear and easy for the review team to understand what what are these dollars going to be used for, what the what is the program going to look like, and how is it going to benefit uh, the residents of your community. Okay, thank you for all the questions. I think it's um, great to really be making sure that that everybody's on the same page. Any other questions? at this time.
No? Okay. Uh, again, if, if you do have questions along the way, um, reach out. I would recommend, again, just not to uh, provide too much information, but I am going to be out of the office next week uh, starting Wednesday. So um, I would encourage you to kind of reach out um, sooner rather than later so that we can make sure that we'll get you all the information that you need um, prior to starting your applications. Um, let's see. What happens if at the end of the program we spend less than the projected amount? Uh, don't. You should really try to make that budget as accurate as you possibly can. Um, we want to see all of this funding going towards the program. Um, and so, again, uh, once the contracts are awarded, we will be more than happy to kind of have ongoing communications and conversations. Uh, when we do that interim report, you're going to be providing us with the amount of money that you've spent down at halfway through the grant. So that'll be a great time for us to kind of have a conversation um, if those numbers are not seeming uh, like they're going to add up at the end of the process. Um, but I really encourage you, you know, the budget is not a guess. Uh, it really is you telling us, this is what this project is going to cost me. Um, and so once you're kind of submitting those numbers, it is really going to be used as your fiscal ro roadmap for how you're going to run this program. So uh, again, you know, to, to revisit the, the question earlier about like, do you need exact amounts? No. Um, but these should not just be kind of random numbers that, that you're pulling out of the air. You really should be thinking about the, the program in a thoughtful way, uh, mapping out each activity and part of this process and determining how much money it's going to cost you. Um, anything else? I want to give people the opportunity since it seems like we keep more questions keep popping up, which is great. Okay. Uh, again, reach out to us. Uh, we're really excited to be able to offer this program uh, opportunity, and we hope um, that all of you are, are excited too. Uh, we want these to be creative, uh, exciting programs for your residents, and again, to just kind of really support uh, the growing need for, for mental health services, substance use services, and stigma reduction in your communities. Um, so uh, we look forward to all of the applications, look forward to, to hearing from you if you have any other questions, um, and we will uh, see your applications on July 31st at 5 p.m. Thanks, everybody, for joining us.